Wife 44 F cheated. I 45 M filed for divorce when I found out and she tried to kill herself on New Year's Eve. Right, where to begin? The soon to be ex you and I were together for over 25 years, 22 of those married. Prior to this, there were no infidelities or large problems. We have four children, a pair of twins boy and girl 20 years old, a son that's 19 and our youngest daughter is 15. I filed for divorce mid-December and had her move out of our home and back with her parents. Got a lot of voicemail left and emails and even handwritten letters about how sorry she is about what she's done, but I never replied in any way. When it finally dawned on her I was really going through this and there was nothing she could do to stop it, she attempted suicide. In all likelihood, she would have died had her parents not stayed at home to keep an eye on her. From what I've been told, she tried to overdose on pills, but no one knows where she got them in the first place. Her infidelity apparently became fully physical only recently late November or early December, but even before that she was emotionally cheating for at least a few months before that. I don't care to find out how long since it wouldn't really help me in any way. Since it was a married man with whom she had the affair, I'd notified his wife, so he's getting divorced too. Add to that, they're co-workers, which is how they met in the first place, and I assume they used work time to start the affair. For those that are going to ask how did you find out? The answer is I didn't. Our son and daughter the twins did. They saw their mother kissing with the other man, in public the place in question isn't somewhere where any of us usually pass through and then they proceeded to inform me. I started digging around and found more than enough evidence of a prolonged affair. I don't have many deal breakers, and believe that marriage is something that's a continuous work in progress. You have to do your part to keep it alive and well, but cheating is something that I absolutely will not overlook or forgive. To cheat is to take a sheet on all the time you spent together, to take a dump on your shared lives. It's nothing more than selfishness and cruelty. I'm just telling you so you can understand me a bit better. Maybe, but that's a really, really reaching maybe, I could have tried to look past this if it had been a one-time thing and she immediately came to me, contrite and remorseful. But she wasn't. I mean, she only started sobbing and bawling once she got caught and that to me is utterly worthless. It's easy to cry once your sheet is put into the spotlight, but before all this? I've never noticed anything remorseful about her or any sign of guilt. I just can't live with someone like that. Thankfully, all of the kids were supporting and understanding when I told them I was going to divorce their mother. Our youngest cried more than I did, but said I was doing the right thing, for all of us. She did ask me if she could live with me the other three already have places of their own, by their own choice and I told her she didn't even have to ask. I think that's the best thing in this situation overall, just having the kids there showing me not all of those years being with my wife were a waste. Whatever she's like now, I can at least be grateful for our children, if nothing else. I love them more than anything. Unfortunately, nearly everyone we know, barring the friends who were my friends before they became the families, are trying to get me to stop the divorce and talk to her, go into counseling or some other nonsense. More so after the suicide attempt. Needless to say, all those people are on my sheet list and I've cut all forms of communication with them. Sadly, that includes the in-laws, whom I've really loved before all this happened since I'm an orphan myself and saw them as the family I never had. They tried getting to me through their grandkids, which has soured them on visiting their grandparents in the near future. The kids tell me they love them, but they just can't be around them at this time because they're being so overbearing. They've also chosen to distance themselves from their mother, though they're still in touch obviously. I'm in therapy myself, going through some counseling because for all that's happened I feel nothing. When I look back at finding out about all this, I see the lack of rage and hurt is very worrying. My therapist says I've numbed myself on purpose, to help me get through this easier. I don't know. Before all this, 
If anyone asked me how I felt about my marriage and wife, I'd probably tell them I as happy as I could be, with a big smile on my face. Now? Nothing. When I heard about the suicide attempt, you might as well have told me the weather forecast for the day. I didn't feel anything. Not for me personally, anyway. I was angry, in a way, as to what this could have done to our children, but beyond that her trying to kill herself just doesn't get a reaction out of me. I'm not happy that she's realized how much she's ruined our lives, but I'm not feeling any sort of empathy either. I can't. It's just that I look at the situation and think yes, and? How is that any concern of mine? I'm not like that. Or at least I don't think I was like that before all of this. And my therapist assures me the numbness will pass, it's part of the healing process, but here we are, more than a month later and I still feel nothing about what happened. I'm honestly not sure if that's good or bad. I'll just have to wait and see. As to the rest of my life, the friends that stayed true to me aren't letting me spend much time alone. They understand that I do need some time for myself every now and again, but they don't want me to alone. It all seems so different now, you know? Now, my main concern here is about our kids. For now, they're keeping away from her, of their own free choice. I didn't poison them against their mother or anything of the sort, they just don't want to talk to her much at all. Our youngest has been hit the hardest by her mother's infidelity, and I've been thinking of maybe having her see go for some therapy too, if we can't resolve this on our own. This is what really bothers me about the whole thing, that our children reacted so severely to their mother's infidelity. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't glad that they did react negatively to it, because it goes to show that they understand that adultery is no small matter and that it can, like it has for us, destroy marriages and families. But I'm worried about long term. Will they get over this? Will they eventually form a tangible relationship with their mother? Will they heal? If any of you folks have been in any situation as similar as ours, please share your experiences. Just talk to them. Have an honest conversation. Sit them down one by one, if need be and explain to them that you want to know how they're handling the situation. Nothing they feel will hurt your feelings but you want to make sure they're alright. Your kids are all pretty much adults. Even your youngest is old enough to know what's going on. So approach this pragmatically, as if you're dealing with an adult. If they need additional help, see about getting them some. But it sounds like they've been pretty honest about how they're feeling up to this point. Also, good on you for not going back to her. No contact is the way to go. As much as I hate to say this, she's obviously hurting and that may have turned her into a bit of an attention seeker. She's going though some things but just as her mental health is important, so is yours. Don't allow yourself or your children to be put back in an unhealthy situation. We've had a few times together, one on one, when I'd talk with them about this, when it seemed like it was weighing a lot on their minds. But still, they seem to be cautious, like they expect me to break at any given moment, because I didn't show any big emotion until now. Or I'm just overthinking things. They're really important to me, and I'll see about talking with them again real soon they've been around more often since this happened, and asking if they maybe would feel more comfortable talking with a professional instead of me. As far as their mother and myself are concerned, I don't have any plans whatsoever to get in touch with her, though it has been hinted at me, by my therapist, that at one point if she sought therapy I might be asked to come along, but I'm not really sure I could or even want to do that. Her mental health, as cold as this may sound, is none of my concern so long as it doesn't have an impact on our children in a negative way. Thank you for your advice and your kind words. I know it's probably not the answer you want, but they need time. There is no way to hurry healing. You being in counseling is a very good thing, keep going. The numbness is concerning. I believe that too will pass with time. When my husband cheated on me, I actually grieved the death of my marriage for many months. You had a good marriage, just as I did. 
It's not easy, even all this time later, to remember how happy we were and how much I lost. The same will happen to your children, if not now, then in time. My only concern would be that they are not honest with their feelings, due to their loyalty to you. So again, hopefully with time, they will be able to forgive their mother. That's going to be a huge part of the healing they need to do. And that has nothing to do with her, and everything to do with their own mental health and well-being. She may never know whether or not she was forgiven. It's interior too, and important for, them. I wish you all the best. I signed up for a Reddit account so I could give you some insight. I'm 28 years old, when I was 16 years old, I found photos of my father and my mother's best friend. You know, naked photos of them together. It ruined my life. Straight up, I'm forever changed. It was over a decade ago and I still can't forgive my father, no matter how much my mother has been trying to get me to reconnect with him. And she tries, trust me. I honestly don't know if your kids will ever forgive their mother, for me, I can't forgive my dad. I just can't. I've tried, I still try and have a relationship with him, but it's very difficult. By cheating on my mother, he betrayed my brother and I, too. He betrayed our family. It destroyed my mother, and no matter what my parents' problems were, she never deserved that. He was very understanding of this for a long time, but now he just thinks I should grow up. I will never have a relationship with him the way him or my mother wants me to. That being said, if your kids can't reconcile with their mother, well, it's not necessarily the worst thing in the world. It's really sad, of course, but sometimes we just can't. It's life. It's sad, but it's life. All you can do is keep encouraging it, but if they don't want to, don't try and force it. What you need to focus on is being there for them, supporting them, encouraging them and should they want to open up to you about how they feel about their mother, allow them to remain positive about their relationship with her. But in the end, it may not work. But that's not your fault, not your failing. That's hers.